working on it with you. So, of course, I like the idea of starting fresh, regroup. we got a bunch of new people on, a different format, a whole different show. You know, it's just a, it'd be, all in all, it's going to be a good, whoa. It'll I'll, just be a good thing. Sorry about that. It's got a big echo in there. That's it. But, no, I'm really excited. We can uh, move up. We're well, getting a lot more people involved. That's the thing, too. You know, being the fact that we are present down there in Bakersfield, it, it, calling it Northwest Dirt News just didn't fit anymore. No. And, you know, things progress. The show is progressing with our presence down at Bakersfield. Um, you know, if it figures, yeah, it just fits that we're going to cover more West Coast. Yeah. So it just made sense to call it West Coast Wide Open. We're going to have Brian and, and Mike as a regular on the show um, with the results from Bakersfield every every week talking about the highlights um, and everything going on down there. I, I am excited about this change. I truly am excited about this. Um, what do you guys think about it, Brian, Mike? I'm, I'm really excited about it. I mean, to be a part of something this big and that it's only going to get bigger. It is. truly is. I mean, what, with what you guys are doing down there right now and how hard you're working, I wish I could be down there to kind of – help move things along but you guys i mean if, if people knew what you guys are doing in the background to make this thing bigger and better they they just they would understand how hard you guys are really working on and i can't tell you how much i appreciate you guys i mean in my opinion i think i think mike mike coming on has been a, a big thing for me because i've been able to relax and be myself and and be a little bit more exciting when i do my job at the racetrack so i appreciate mike he's a good guy and i love working with him that's a hug to you, Mike. You know, Brian, the, the feeling is absolutely mutual, man. Being able to go out there and and work with you and really really work with the you and not the you before. You know, really getting to see the Brian Smith, not just you know the guy behind the microphone up there the past the past year. Really get to see you open up, really show your not only your knowledge of Bakersfield Speedway and racing. But just your knowledge in general of cars and fans and drivers, and it's really helped me out a lot, and I know it's helped out our group, and with the the change that we're having right now with our podcast going from Northwest Dirt News to now West Coast Wide Open, you know, Corey and I... We, you know, we were talking about Northwest Dirt News way, way back before it even had a name. And he was, we were start doing this and we were trying to figure out how to incorporate California into it because Corey came down every year for the Bud Nationals. Mike, hold on one second. And Is somebody doing something over there? Like, it sounds like I hear a lot of noise in the background from somebody. Yeah, are you guys there? Yeah, I know. Okay, it sounds like somebody's doing something in the background, like working, or are, are, are you guys just kind of chilling out? I'm yeah. just chilling in my office. Okay, I hear a lot of background noise. Go ahead. But, yeah, Mike, you're right. Talk about Northwest Dirt News and incorporating California and putting this whole thing, tying it together into one big show, and that's what we're going to do from now on with better quality, um, bigger sponsor, bigger sponsorship packages coming for everybody. Um, and it's just going to be a, a huge deal to cover the West Coast. And to have you guys on board to, to give us the results of what's going on down that way is going to be nothing but uh, benefit everybody. And we are we're, we're excited and glad to have you on board, man. Yeah, it, it's going to be fun. And I'm really glad, you know, that what has happened and at Bakersfield Speedway, the way it's happened and the way it's progressed, it, it really makes me happy because – that was one thing that Corey and I talked about before I came over is how's it going to work out? What's the reception going to be? You know, what's the outside perception going to be from all the fans seeing Moxie media everywhere down there? And at first everybody was kind of like, Whoa, what is this? But then when they realized, Hey, wait, these are the guys that come out at Bud Nationals. They speak a, a great show. They put on a great effort out there up in the booth. They bring us guys from up north that we wouldn't normally be able to see or compete against. And they're a great group of, of just all-around guys in general. And it's been, you know, very, very heartwarming to me that these people have opened, you know, they've opened up to, to me and, and welcomed me in 
to, to their family out there. Well, I didn't expect anything different from, from Brian and the Schweitzer family and the staff at Bakersfield. They're a great bunch of people. And, Brian, your wealth of, of, of Bakersfield history and your knowledge of everybody there has been nothing but a benefit to that racetrack. I mean, you grew up out there and kind of absorbed everything. Let's kind of talk about your involvement with Bakersfield and kind of your history there real quick, bud. Uh, Bakersfield, uh, I've lived here all my life, pretty much after my dad was restationed back out uh, from uh, North Carolina. And uh, I born ra- well, not born and raised here, but just raised here. You know, I've been going to that track probably ever since I was in the fifth and sixth grade. So the knowledge I have goes back. And, and Don Luke can attest to this. Our, uh, he's kind of like our arch our, how would you call it, our historian of the Bakersfield Speedway, because we get in discussions about drivers of the past, and I remember names, numbers, colors of cars, and he looks at me like, this guy's not lying. He knows who he's talking about, because we got into an argument, and then I was like, no, and I called out this guy's name, and he looked at me like, oh my God, this is like from like 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> I said, because I, I have a photographic memory. I try to remember a lot of stuff, so that's what kind of helps, and being such a big race fan, it's made my love of the sport so much bigger. So that's where that all comes from. And I think that's what makes you guys so good down there is because you are fans first. But when you get behind the mic, you go to announcer mode and really have the ability to, to entertain the fans and bring knowledge and history. And, and that, is, that, is, is, that is an awesome combination for, for everybody down there. And you guys are going to be just fantastic together. I'm glad you guys are working together, and we're going to get down there for the Bud Nationals, and all of us are going to get up there and, and do our thing like we always do, and I'm excited about that. I want to talk about Bakersfield Speedway last Saturday night and kind of give us the lowdown and the results of what happened down there and walk us through the classes and the highlights. All right, Mike, do you want, you want to take a start? Hey there, Mike. What was that one? I couldn't. I couldn't hear. We're going to go through Bakersfield Speedway. Let's talk about last Saturday night. They gave us some results, some highlights. Uh, Brian said, go ahead and take the lead on this one. You'll start this segment. And let's talk about uh, what you guys saw and what happened and, and give us uh, the results. All right. Well, first off, we had six different classes, or excuse me, five classes. We had the Mod Lights, the IMCA Stock Cars, Sport Mods, Hobby Stocks, and American Stock. In the Mod Lights, we had a lot of young guns start up front. Uh, we had Anthony Balcazar, Hollywood, J.D. Brown. A lot of the young guns start off early. But ultimately, when it all was said and done, the Godfather spoke up, you know, and everybody had to bow down and kiss the ring. The Godfather of Mod Light, Zach Forster, in the 11 car, once again takes the win. Then you had Philip Barrow in the 29 come in second. Cheyenne Flippo. Now, Cheyenne had a special thing going on this weekend, this past weekend. She was part of the Dream Team. For some of you guys that don't know what that is, we're taking young kids that might have mental or physical uh, disabilities that might not be able to go to a racetrack out to the racetrack, put them with a driver as a pit crew member and a fan, and get to learn the ins and outs of racing. Cheyenne stepped up last week and took a young gentleman. Uh, under her wing and had an absolute blast and she drove you know like she was motivated to win for that young man and it was it was cool to see you guys will see some of the videos and stuff we posted on Facebook on Bakersfield Speedway's page we've also put it on the Moxie Mike Patterson Moxie Media Promotions Brian's posted it up on his page as well and it's an awesome thing that they're doing out here it's the I got to give credit where credit's due. It's the brainchild of Billy Simpkins. He was the one that, that brought this to the forefront. Uh, Sarah Hood has been able to uh, take this by the horns and really, really drive it. And we're me and Brian have tried our best to to be there to help out as much as we can with it. And it's it's been a good show so far with this Dream Team event. The Dream Team thing is awesome. Something else I want to ask you about real quick. I was looking through the the news there on on Facebook, and I came across uh, Jacob Carey uh, uh, making his way into the Mod Light ranks. Now, the young man's, what is he, 11 years old? Yeah, yeah 11 years old, three-time mini dwarf champion. So from what you saw Saturday night, Brian, what do you think this kid's going to do? Well, I, I think he's got the potential to become a champion in the division and possibly move 
to a higher level of racing. He's got a good father, uh, good morals. He's a good kid, uh, and uh, all around just good kid. I mean, I like to see these youngsters do really well, and he, I think he's going to go to the top. Well, that's what a lot of people are saying down there about him. We've kind of talked to some people back and forth about, hey, what do you think about this kid? And a lot of them have said, hey, look, keep your eye on him. He's another one of those kids that's going to move up through the ranks. And, and uh, it's always fun to watch those kids start their careers at your track um, or wherever, whatever your home track is at such a young age and move their way up through the ranks. For us up here, it's been, you know, Joey Tanner started running late models. I think he was 14 or 15. Justin Duty. We had uh, Billy Workman Jr. in a late model at 13. Now he's winning races back east in, in modifieds. And we've got Bryson James, who's come up, you know, 12 years old in a stock car, who's made his way up. And everybody knows Bryson's name on the West Coast now. Uh, do you think this kid can be in that, that young gun category where everybody's going to know his name? Oh, most definitely. Very cool. Most definitely. So who were who, – that was our – you had the top three in the mod lights. Who was our fourth and fifth place drivers in mod lights? crazy story here's the crazy part about the mod light division third fourth fifth seventh eighth tenth ninth excuse me ninth tenth and twelfth were all mini dwarf drivers four years ago wow or less so these kids are all 13 and under yeah at one point, some of these guys are up to 16 now. They were 13 back then. But, I mean, we've got guys, Anthony Balcazar, J.D. Brown, Kylie Forrester, Jacob Carey. Uh, then you come down a little bit farther, Caden McCaslin, Jerry Flippo, Chloe Jones. I mean, you guys know some of those names. Those were all mini dwarf drivers starting in, you know, mini dwarfs and moving their way up. And they're getting faster and faster. Some of these kids couple of years ago when they first stepped into a mod light it looked like it was a pedal fest they were literally pedaling the car now they're up there battling for first and second place every weekend and these are cars that are pushing the, the, the class you're talking about the mod lights down there a little bit bigger than what we call a dwarf car uh look more like an imca modified kind of smashed up you know kind of smushed together but uh what are they running i think they're running a thousand cc engine is that right yeah, they're yeah. running a thousand cc. They're a little bit heavier than a, a dwarf car. Uh, size wise, they're a little bit. Uh, they're running the same rear axle, front axle, uh, front setup, but the body the body type's a little bit different. Zach Forster took a bunch of these guys to Arizona to run the dwarf car uh, mod light challenge, where they where they ran all those cars together, and the mod lights absolutely spank everybody out there that's cool well they're, they're more I, I look at the mod lights and kind of i look at the dwarf cars see how they're set up and i look at the mod lights and the mod lights look more like a true race car dom that's something we noticed down the bud nationals yeah, there actually was a difference i mean i've seen some are very yeah. similar they just change the body but there are almost the, spec built ones the mod lights i think you were showing me. An, an evolution of the dwarf car was it you brian showing me one of okay. you two were showing me the difference. I think it was Brian that was Brian, showing you yeah. the difference of the of the yeah. mod lights down there, and, and they truly are. Uh, they uh, look more like or built more like a real race car than yeah. opposed to like a dwarf. Not it's not a knock on the dwarfs. I'm just saying the way yeah. these cars are constructed. Yeah, everybody wants to say it's the same thing. It's not. They're they're not anything close. But um, no, yeah, they're they're the evolution of dwarf cars. Yeah, they're the next. Well, the, the mod the mod light is like a small version. Of your large modifieds that ran like in New York is basically what they look like. Right, the big block modifieds, absolutely. So our next division up from the mod lights, Brian, was what? Uh, would be the uh, Bang Energy American Stocks. Let's. I love these cars. I love the American Stocks at Bakersfield. Let's talk about them and give us the the rundown, the results, and the highlights of their features. Well, picking up his second main event of the year, because uh, last year he had a lot of bad luck, so. I think this year might be his year in the number three car of Brandon Ratcliffe. He picks up main event number two. Uh, coming home second, first time back racing is the 15D of Dakota Brown. And then uh, one of my favorites, and he's got a really beautiful car, but a lot of people don't like it because it's green, is number 14 of J.D. Mueller. And uh, Candy Varney comes home for it. How many American socks did you guys have down there? 
We had uh, 20. 